Is Missouri ready for an almost 700 mile per hour Hyperloop commute? The idea is to start by connecting St. Louis, Columbia, and Kansas City. Virgin Hyperloop One says Missouri is among the top five options in the world, if not top three, for the high speed track. Imagine this next generation of transportation in Missouri. Virgin Hyperloop One is taking a hard look at the Interstate 70 corridor. The pods are designed for passengers or cargo and would travel at speeds of 670 miles per hour. The pods accelerate gradually by way of electric propulsion through a low pressure tube. The vehicle floats above the track using magnetic levitation and glides at airline speeds for long distances. Travel from St. Louis to Kansas City would take less than 30 minutes. The technology has a futuristic appeal. Nearly all of the air inside the Hyperloop tube is removed using a series of vacuum pumps. This effectively creates our own sky inside the tube as if you are quietly flying at 200,000 feet above sea level. This reduces drag so only the smallest amount of electricity is needed to achieve extraordinary speeds and creates a more cost and energy efficient system than high speed rail or airline transport. That may sound a little sci-fi to some people, but it's happening at a test site in Nevada. And it's also very real to people in the show me state who are heavily involved in trying to make it happen. But first, that show me spirit needed some convincing. After spending some time with the Hyperloop One individuals at their headquarters, I walked out saying, wow, these individuals might actually be creating a new mode of transportation that goes faster than anything we've ever seen on the ground before and is reliable and is safe. And if they're going to do that, I would really like to see Missouri as part of it. Tom Blair is St. Louis District Engineer for the Missouri Department of Transportation. On behalf of MoDOT, he entered the Virgin Hyperloop One Global Challenge. Blair's team submitted a proposal for the I-70 corridor, a perfect match for MoDOT's Road to Tomorrow initiative. That's the original interstate. That's where the interstate system started was I-70 specifically in St. Charles County. Ultimately, at some point in time, when we get the right funding and mix, we need to rebuild that interstate. And do we really want to rebuild it the same way or do we want to look at it with a fresh set of eyes? Then Andrew Smith, Vice President of Entrepreneurship and Innovation with St. Louis Regional Chamber became involved. When Smith heard of MoDOT's submission into the competition, he was part of the Governor's Innovation Task Force. Smith said he called Blair pleased to hear how the I-70 corridor had appealed to Hyperloop One. The intrinsic benefits of that route, it's very flat, it's very straight, the land is cheap. You've got these two metropolitan areas on um, either side of the state um, that all make it very attractive. And we said, okay, that's great, but you know, where do we stand in the competition? That was the hitch. And he said, well, you know, I think we're slipping a little bit. We haven't heard from them for a while, but Actually, hold on. It turns out I got an email from them this morning. I haven't opened it yet. So I said, okay, we'll wait and see what they say. So he opens the email and we're kind of listening to him. He goes, oh, huh. Well, they're announcing the finalists tomorrow. And we thought, oh boy, this, this is, uh, is going to get really interesting. At that point, you know, it's about three or four in the afternoon. And we started just calling into Virgin Hyperloop One. Eventually dialed our way to the head of the global project. I ended up talking to him for about an hour and a half at seven o'clock that night and um, begged, pleaded, and cajoled for us to stay in the competition as a finalist. Um, you know, I asked him, what do we need to do to really win this thing and to, to be a serious contender? And he laid out the roadmap and I said, I think we can do that. Um, so he said, okay, let me talk to the CEO. About nine o'clock at night, calls me back and said, I talked to the CEO, we're gonna keep you in this, but you're gonna to have to do X, Y, and Z if you really wanna to rise to the top. So sure enough, the next day it comes out, we're still a finalist. We're one of, um, I think it was about 10 finalists globally out of 2,600 regions that had applied for this. Making good on promises, Smith is now co-founder of a public-private group called the Missouri Hyperloop Coalition. Next up, asking engineering firms for bids to conduct a Hyperloop feasibility study designed to answer a long list of questions detailing every aspect of the proposed Hyperloop route in Missouri. Black & Veatch was willing to do this entire study pro bono. So without any cost to the state, without any cost to taxpayers, without any cost even to the coalition. And it's a significant investment. 
And Black & Veatch is one of the top engineering firms in the world. Which he says is making a world of difference. Virgin Hyperloop One came out and said, Missouri is one of the top five, if not top three routes in the world. Blair says he sees the future of transportation in a way he never imagined before his visit to Hyperloop One. You're going to walk up there and there's going to be a Hyperloop pod there is what they envision. So you don't have to wait for the bus. You don't have to wait for the plane. And remember too, we as humans are not driving these. So during that 20 to 25 minute commute to Kansas City, you're not burdened with the responsibility of stop and go traffic, being alert as a driver. You can do what, whatever they provide available or whatever you bring with you in that, in that vehicle. It's a vision Smith shares with him as he feels Missouri is the perfect place. This is where the U.S. interstate system began. And the reason that the U.S. interstate system began here is because if you're going to build a network, you start in the middle. And that's something that we have that no, no other place has. And then you start thinking about the history of Missouri and the kinds of things that we have been involved in, in the past, and you realize it's possible. There wouldn't have been a space program if it hadn't been for McDonnell Douglas and the work that was done in St. Louis by St. Louis engineers to put people in orbit and ultimately get people to the moon. So to me, this is you know, the natural next step, and it's um, something that's very much connected with the history of our state. For HEC, I'm Kathleen Berger.